Hi everybody, welcome to another episode of Quick Fire Q&A here on History Made Awesome. Uh, this time we are with Dr. Sasha Pack, who is Professor of History and Director of Graduate Studies at the Department of History at the University of Buffalo. Uh, Professor Pack, are you ready to do this Quick Fire q and uh, I'm not sure, but I, <laughs> I'm as ready as I'll ever be. Sounds cool. So, Professor Pack, just kind of come... Can I answer the first thing that kind of comes to your head and kind of give a quick answer of why you kind of chose that answer? So 10 questions, both history, okay. non-history questions. So Dan, take it away, my man. All right, question one. What piece of historical literature do you think is overrated and why? Oof. Um, oh, boy, I, I don't know. That's, um, that is, let's go with Edward Gibbons' uh, the, the uh, uh, Decline and Fall of the Roman Empire. Why? Because, um, because it just sets up this kind of narrative of decadence and fall that, that, um, that um, doesn't allow for the idea of kind of gradual transformation and change. Mm. I thought you would say Benedict Anderson's Imagine Oh, you. I should have said that. I shouldn't <laughs> have been so hard on Sir Edward. I think that's right. I, I always thought, yeah, that, that was a, that's a book that has a great title that you you don't even have to read. You just say, well, as an imagined community and you sound like you know what you're talking about, but I just think there are much better theories <laughs> of nationalism out there. Yeah, yeah. I, I told Professor Harris about I, I am gonna rescind my answer. <laughs> okay, yeah. so I told Professor Harris about the yeah. one that you said I should read and she thought it was interesting too, but uh, yeah. Question two, what is your biggest pet peeve, the historian or professor? Oh boy, there's just too many of them. Pet, pet peeve. I've been on. I've been away from the classroom for so long now that I, I can't think of them. It's probably. Let's go with you know. It's the probably the use of the present tense um, when talking about history. Mm, I do that writing sometimes. So. Yes, you do. <laughs> it's a mistake. It's a mistake I don't want to make, but sometimes my brain just doesn't work at times. <laughs> Question three, what new thing, either knowledge, skill, or hobby, did you take up during the pandemic? Um, knowledge, skill, you know, I, um, I, that, that, that's a tough one. I didn't, uh, I took, not, took up none. I took up none. Um, I was, I spent a lot of time at home with my kids and uh, that was not conducive to learning a new hobby. It's important, it's important to learn, I guess. <laughs> Is that a hobby? <laughs> uh, question four if you were sent to live in any historical period for a year which one would you like um i think you know it, it would probably have to be uh it probably have to be the um it would probably have to be tangier in um the first part of the 20th century I you know, wrote all about it. I became fascinated by the place. Um, and uh, it, it's just, it's, it's this kind of rugged, rough and tumble place that also has a kind of um, um, gentility to it at the same time that just, it's, it's really appealing to me. It's very cosmopolitan, but very rough at the same, same time. Just go and explore and talk to people and all that good stuff and see what's going down down there. Yeah, I mean it's because you know it's because of course I researched and wrote about it, so that's why. I, I'm very similar. For me, late 19th century Paris would be really cool. To that'd go. be up there. Yeah, that'd be up there too. Yeah. Speaking of parents, Paris, do you feel different or that you act different when you were in Paris or in another European city as compared to when you were at home in Buffalo? Now this is um, my dad's question, so if it's a good question or bad question, it's on him. So just go. it's a good question. It's a good question. I used to, um, but I just go back and forth so much now that I don't think I do anymore. Um, but I, I definitely used to, you know, feel like a pretty a, diff, a pretty different person. I had to, you know, because you're 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 constantly making sure that you're kind of behaving properly or in an acceptable way in a different culture, and then you come home and then you forget. You have the, the like reverse culture shock and you forget how to act. But now I think I've gotten into the rhythm of it. So no, not anymore. But I absolutely used to. So it's a good question. Question six. What Spanish dish or cuisine should everyone try when they visit Spain? Don't be like the Viserys now. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, you've got... You, you, you've got to try. I don't know what she. I don't remember what she said, but you've got to try the the arroz. You know, it's usually known as paella, um, but but um, 
but there's lots of different versions of it, um, and it's just it's it's so good. Uh, Professor Harris basically says she had none because she doesn't like Spanish food. What is a food or dish from Spain that everyone should try when they visit? <laughs> the dirty secret is they actually really hate Spanish food. <laughs> <laughs> but she did tell us about Insulada Busa, uh, which is oh yeah. <laughs> yeah, don't don't worry. Don't you can put that low on on your list. I wouldn't I wouldn't recommend it. Brilliant, brilliant. Yeah, uh, next one yeah. Goes. It's this kind of. Oh my God, sorry. Well, no, no, I I won't no. go into it. No, go 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 for it. Go for it. Well, it's just kind of this gelatinous blob of mayonnaise with like peas and carrots sort of suspended in it. Um, that's. <laughs> it's not as popular as it used to be. I think. I think people are. I think we would just try it just to see. I mean, we would just try just to like see what what it, what's all the nastiness is about or whatever. Yeah. Cool. <laughs> Question seven: What is the one thing you can't live without? Um, I have to say that it's probably you know it's probably my laptop. I. I it's a straight a straight answer. I agree. I agree. Laptop and or a uh, computer for Wi-Fi or Wi-Fi for me. It's yeah. Similar. I never thought I'd say it, but it's the truth. <laughs> what club or after-school activity did you take up when when you were part of high school? Uh, the jazz band. Oh, oh very good. Yeah, I played the piano. I still do. I thought you would say athlete because you're a pretty tall dude. I was thinking volleyball or basketball. Um, I was like, okay. Yeah, well, I, yeah. I mean, I used to I used to play both of those, um, especially basketball. But you know, I'm not a, like a very good basketball player. But I've always, you know, I'm usually tall enough that I can still contribute because you know, because <laughs> you just have a natural advantage when you're tall, and so so like my it makes up for a part of my lack of skill. If you can make a t- film or TV series about one Spanish historical person, event, or place. What would it be and why? Oh, well, I already talked about this, but it would definitely be Juan March, the, the, the tobacco smuggler turned um, empresario uh, turned billionaire. Um, he's just, he's just um, a, a really, <laughs> he's, a, he's a figure that, you know, he's got it all. He's kind of like, you know, he, he's sort of like Trump. You know, he becomes, I mean, he's much more, um, he's much more clever and he's much more, um, debonair, but he he sort of turns his wealth and celebrity in into like populist politics, in a way that um, you know. And there are a lot of people who do this. Actually, Pablo Escobar did it down in Colombia too. I mean, there's just t- tons of people who do this. But Juan March is is you know, so not just I shouldn't single out Trump. I mean, this is a pretty common sort of thing. You know, you have celebrity notoriety, um, but you've never really been accepted into the upper classes even though you have the money because people kind of think you're an outsider because you're either because you're a criminal in the case of March or you're you know you're a boor in the case of Trump uh and and so you kind of get back at them by like rallying the the people the, the common people you know to support you and I think that's you know I think it should be an interesting study in that nice nice I agree it'd be a good wow. interesting one last question if yeah. you were not a historian, what would you be? Ooh. Mm. Homeless? I don't know. Um, <laughs> the, uh... Yeah, I also often ask myself that question. If I'm going to be real honest, probably the answer is lawyer. Um, Why not musical artist? Aren't you in a band? Yeah, well, you know, I, I probably wouldn't, wouldn't be able to make I don't have the talent uh, to really make a living at that. That's the thing. <laughs> Half the pop stars. <laughs> <laughs> oh damn damn firing shots over here what um, was that i missed it i said neither do half the pop stars well that's true yeah <laughs> but i probably don't have the right combination of luck talent and looks that you know so hi everyone eric here if you enjoyed this quick fire q a with professor pack then be sure to check out the podcast we did with him the video can be found in the eye above or in the description below thank you